Wings of Fire by Abdul Kalam Summary and Analysis Narrated by Saurav Chakraborty Abdul Kalam's Perspective Abdul Kalam was one of India's most distinguished scientists. He was an aerospace engineer, professor, and chancellor of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. On top of this, he also served as the 11th President of India from 2002 to 2007. During his term as president, he was popularly known as the People's President. He was responsible for the development of India's first satellite launch vehicle, the SLV-3. Kalam is popularly known as the Missile Man of India for developing ballistic missiles and space rocket technology. Kalam also played a pivotal role in India's Pokhran-2 nuclear test in 1998, the first since India's initial nuclear test in 1974. He also received honorary doctorates from 30 universities and the country's three highest civilian honors Padma Bhushan, 1981, Padma Vibhushan, 1990, and Bharat Ratna, 1997. Introduction Wings of Fire is the autobiography of the former president of India, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Kalam went from being a humble boy in South India to developing India's nuclear weapons and becoming president. Through this autobiography, the reader gains a glimpse into pre-partition India. Kalam also exposes readers to the positive thinking and ideas that helped him become such a success. This is the story of Kalam's rise from obscurity and his personal and professional struggles. It is also a saga of independent India's struggle for technological self-sufficiency and defensive autonomy. Abdul Kalam's Upbringing Kalam starts the book at the beginning of his life. He was born in Rameswaram, India, to a secure middle-class Tamil family. His father owned a boat, which is a sign of wealth. Rameswaram was a great environment to grow up in, as there was a tight-knit community where everybody supported each other. People were willing to talk about religion and spirituality openly. From a young age, Callum developed a respect for other religions. His father also worked as an imam in the local mosque. Callum grew up believing that faith is an essential part of being human. All family members encouraged Callum to work hard and excel at school. Callum's family talked a lot about the latest advancements in science and new groundbreaking literature over dinner. These conversations formed a foundation for the passion for academia that Callum developed. Callum was close to his parents and described his mother as more like a friend than a parent. He also introduces the readers to his closest friend, Ahmed Jalaluddin. Callum developed intellectual and spiritual maturity from a young age because Ahmed was about 15 years older. They frequently visited the mosque together and talked about Islam. Learning difficult lessons at high school. To fulfill his dream of learning about the most advanced technology in science, Callum left his hometown to attend Schwartz High School in Ramanathapuram. At first, Callum thoroughly enjoyed his time at school. However, one day a new teacher arrived. This teacher, called Rameswaram Shastri, saw Callum sitting next to a Hindu student. He told Callum that this was not allowed and decided to send Callum to the back of the class. This was an early example of the beliefs people held during the partition of India. After this experience, Callum decided to stop the poison of prejudice from spreading, rather than spreading it himself. He continued to be open to all religions throughout his life, including during and after India's partition. When Callum was a young boy, he sold newspapers to help his brother reduce their financial struggles. In the book, Callum praises the demands and support of friends and family as the cornerstone of his life's successes. Abdul Callum's First Experiences with Engineering Callum continued to excel throughout high school and remained particularly interested in science. After completing the Bachelors of Science in Physics, Abdul Callum noticed that he needed to engage with engineering to make his dreams a reality. So, he chose to apply for an engineering course at the Madras Institute of Technology. That said, despite coming from a relatively wealthy background, the admission fees were still too expensive for him. Luckily, his eldest sister saw his potential and was willing to help him obtain a place. She supported him financially throughout the early stages of his time at the Madras Institute of Technology. Learning to Fly This generosity encouraged Callum to work as hard as possible to obtain a scholarship. His hard work eventually paid off and he took some financial burdens off his elder sister. As well as academic success, Callum was working towards living his dream. He had always dreamed of flying an aircraft. So, it makes perfect sense that Callum decided to choose aeronautical engineering as his major at university. 
Abdul Kalam provides advice to future engineering students. Specifically, he says, when they choose their specialization, the essential point to consider is whether the choice articulates their inner feelings and aspirations. Callum decided to, to pursue aeronautical engineering because it aligned with his passions. Callum suggests that future engineers and all future professionals should choose a role that aligns with their dreams. This is the most critical factor. Looking for work. After graduating from university, Callum had to choose between two passions. His first option was joining the Air Force. His second option was to seek a job at the Directorate of Technical Development and Production. Essentially, the latter would involve working for India's Ministry of Defense. Callum applied for the Air Force to achieve his dream of flying, but he was ultimately rejected. Callum was initially deflated. Deeply disappointed, he trekked down to nearby Rishikesh, where he met Swami Sivananda, a spiritual teacher, author, and yoga guru. Callum considers this meeting to be one of the most important events in his life. Sivananda taught him that he had to accept his destiny and go ahead with his life. It is not worth mulling over things in the past. Instead, Callum was better off moving forward. This is exactly what Callum did. He could still use his passion for aeronautical engineering by working for the Directorate of Technical Development and Production as a senior scientific assistant. Within this role, Callum experienced significant setbacks. He thoroughly enjoyed the freedom he was given to design his aircraft. He designed an indigenous hovercraft called Nandi. Callum worked hard and used innovation to design this hovercraft. hovercraft. The new ministry rejected his design for imported hovercrafts. Essentially, Callum had been told that his work was not good enough. Again, his aeronautical dreams had been quashed, but Callum remained positive. He remembered what Sivananda had taught him, certain events may be out of your control in life, and you should not take them personally. Abdul Callum's destiny changes. Although Callum's design, Nandi, was initially rejected, this was not the end of its story. The design had already created interest and buzz. Then, as if destiny came knocking, the Indian Committee for Space Research invited Callum for an interview. They were going to interview him for the post of rocket engineer. In this interview, he met Professor Sarabhai, the father of the Indian space program. Callum got the job and spent many years working as a rocket engineer. So, a large proportion of this part of the book is educational. Callum outlines the different space stations and organizations based within India. After his initial setback, Callum excelled in rocket science. He received the Padma Bhushan Award after SLV-3, one of his rockets, was successfully launched. The Padma Bhushan is the second highest civilian award of the Republic of India. He then moved to rocketry at the Defense Research and Development Organization. Callum successfully introduced the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program for the development of five different missiles. On the successful launch of India's missile program, Callum received the Padma Vibhashan. Callum thinks failures are seeds for learning and believed India could be a technological leader despite repeated failures. He also learned many valuable management and leadership lessons from Professor Sarabhai. In the early stages of his career, Callum trusted that a free exchange of views was more desirable than giving direction. Callum also learned that leaders exist at every level. Abdul Callum's approach to work. Callum had a strict schedule, even though he was leading projects. Firstly, he would enter the office and clean his table. This allowed Callum to create an environment where he could work effectively. After cleaning his table, he prioritized the papers that required immediate action. While doing this, he would remove everything else from his site, other than those papers. His focus allowed him to take action immediately when he identified work that needed to be done. This was especially true for time-critical tasks that could make an impact or make him memorable. Callum's general work attitude was daring, with persistence to perfection. In his eyes, perfection requires an individual to make mistakes in the past and learn from them. So, he favored allowing mistakes as part of the learning process. He decided to adopt this approach because mistakes are inevitable but generally manageable. Callum suggests that you build your own education by developing the skills that will correct your mistakes. Based on this ethos, Callum was awarded India's top three civilian awards, i.e., Bharat Ratna in 1997, Padma Vibhushan in 1990, and Padma Bhushan in 1981. He was also glorified with honorary degrees from more than 30 universities around the world. Abdul Callum's death. Although not covered in this book, 
Callum's death follows the type of person he was. Specifically, Callum passed away due to cardiac arrest while giving a speech to scientific students. He committed his life to advancing India's scientific and technological understanding. The Three Mighty Forces To succeed in life and achieve results, you must achieve and understand three mighty forces. Desire Belief Expectations These were the most important forces driving Callum towards success. He wanted to make a difference in India through science and technology. Callum also believed in his ability and in God to guide him towards these desires. This belief was strong and was not swayed by setbacks, such as when he was rejected from the Air Force. Instead of giving up, Callum accepted that his life was just guiding him towards a different and more complementary path. Finally, Callum explains that you need to have expectations for your life. Expectations allow you to set goals and react accordingly. Without expectations, you will not have any success or failure. Importantly, expectations allow you to identify failure and learn from these experiences. Final Summary and Review of Wings of Fire Wings of Fire covers the life of one of the most influential individuals in India's history. Abdul Kalam had a huge political influence on his home country, but he also influenced the scientific world. The message you can take from this book is to use desire, belief and expectations to achieve your goals. Wings of Fire quotes Dreams are not that which you see while sleeping, it is something that does not let you sleep. Abdul Kalam, Wings of Fire When learning is purposeful, creativity blossoms. When creativity blossoms, thinking emanates. When thinking emanates, knowledge is fully lit. When knowledge is lit, economy flourishes. Abdul Kalam, Wings of Fire If you fail, never give up because FAIL means first attempt in learning. End is not the end, in fact END means effort never dies. If you get NO as an answer, remember NO means next opportunity. Abdul Kalam, Wings of Fire